I'm Roger Moore and this is Hypnosis Health Info. You know, one of the things that, that I love about spin class, about going to the gym early in the morning, is sometimes it's the time just to be silent and to be quiet and, and other times it's a time for me to be thinking about client sessions and new ideas and in this morning in spin class I, I was particularly thinking about a, a client that I saw yesterday. It was a woman that uh, has quite a bit of, of, of weight to let go of and and this was her second session and she was down two pounds between her first last week from her first session to this session and and which is really great two pounds is a good healthy average way to to let go of the weight it's safe and it's healthy and but she was struggling she had a lot of mental and emotional anguish about uh, changing the way she was eating uh, old cravings old habits a lot of the, the old demons were, were bugging her this week and you know, and, and as human beings, we do our darndest to avoid pain. We're, we're hardwired to be pain avoidant. We seek pleasure. We seek the easy way, the path of least resistance. And changing your relationship with yourself and changing your relationship with food is very challenging and, and can be very difficult. And, and it can actually be painful. You know, uh, lots of years ago, back in, back in the 70s uh, in Minneapolis, uh, I studied at St. Mary's Hospital and Vern Johnson Institute in, in chemical dependency and and so some of my original training is in drugs and alcohol training and and back in those days and you know I used to weigh 100 pounds more than I do now and, and back in those days I became convinced that I was an alcoholic because as I sat in the meetings and and listened to what people were saying um, I identified, I, under, I understood uh, they were talking about me when they talked about their pains and the issues and the challenges they were going through in coming off drugs and alcohol. And yet it quite, didn't really make quite sense to me because I didn't drink that much. i uh, pretty lightweight drinker. And it was several years later before I finally got it that I wasn't addicted to alcohol, or I'm not a uh, drug dependent or alcoholic, uh, alcohol dependent. I'm food dependent. I, I was addicted to food. Now technically food is not a, an addiction in the classical uh, definition of, of addictions, and yet I consider uh, food to be the most difficult addiction to work with. You know, I can send a client out the door after one session of stop smoking and have them be smoke-free for the rest of their life. But for those of us with food issues, we don't have that luxury of never eating again. If it was as simple as never eating again, weight loss really wouldn't be all that big of a deal. But imagine telling someone who has been addicted to cigarettes for 30 years, smoking a pack or more a day, that, oh yeah, for survival, you're going to have to have uh, a, a puff on a cigarette three times a day in order, or in order to survive. Or imagine telling an alcoholic that in order to survive they're going to have to have a, a sip of wine or a shot of alcohol or a drink of beer three times a day. Wouldn't be long before the cigarette smoker would be back to their pack a day and the alcoholic would be uh, out of control again. That's the challenge, or one of the challenges that that those of us who, who dealt with food, with weight loss, with obesity, have had to struggle and, and learn how to overcome, is our bodies demand that we eat. We have to eat. And then along with that, we add in the social, the holiday, the cultural, religious aspects of food. We come together as human beings to break bread and to socialize. But for some of us, it stopped being about the socialization, the interaction with people, and it, and it turned into being about how much food and how fast can I eat it. You know, here in the, the medical dental building, uh, here in Seattle, uh, there's a, a Cold Stone ice cream store. I swear the dentist must have paid for it. It's been there for several years now, and I've never been inside. But I spent a lot of time standing outside looking in the window. And here's what I usually see. I'll see slender people sitting around a table with a small cup of ice cream and maybe one scoop, and they all have spoons, not in the ice cream, but in their hand, and they're totally looking to, into each other's eyes, and they're totally 
engaged in conversation, and the ice cream looks like it's kind of melting. And then I see overweight people, often by themselves, or if they are with somebody, instead of facing each other, they're sitting side by side looking out the window and there's little to no conversation going on between them. And they have big cups of ice cream or big huge uh, waffle cones with two or three scoops and lots of, of um, uh, stuff on it, candy and stuff on it. And that ice cream is not melting. They're totally engaged in the ice cream and not in the social interaction. There's lots of challenges in overcoming weight loss. It's a very challenging experience. Uh, and yet, it's one of the most rewarding experiences that you can have in your life. If you change the relationship that you have with yourself and the relationship that you have with food and allow food to simply be the fuel that you put in your body to keep your body running smoothly, healthily, efficiently. Now, I'm not at all saying that, that food shouldn't taste good. I'm, I'm a big believer that food should taste really good. It should be wonderful. It should be sensuous. It should be a very delightful experience to sit and eat a meal. But the problem is that for most people who are overweight, and it was certainly true for myself, we never tasted our food. I inhaled my food so fast, I had no clue what it tasted like. Today, I, I try to stay as conscious as I can about it. I eat very slowly. I eat very consciously. I chew my food. I savor the flavors, the tastes, the textures, the aromas, and I make it a very pleasurable and very sensual experience. And by doing so, I eat less. I feel totally satisfied, feel totally content, and I can easily maintain my, my healthy ideal weight. Now in my book, Becoming Slender for Life, there's lots of tools, uh, lots of resources to support you in obtaining your ideal weight and most importantly, remaining slender for the rest of your life because that's really what it's all about. So please uh, look around here at Hypnosis Health Info. Check out the various resources that are here, the self-hypnosis, the weight loss tools, the stress reduction tools, lots of free information here. Check my daily blog posts. Every day there's your hypnosis uh, health info suggestion for the day to support you in getting your day started out correctly and support you through the day in, in your journey. Call me, email me, ask questions. Uh, if you're outside of the Seattle area or not near my Bainbridge office, then uh, call me or send me an email and uh, we can work together over the internet doing uh, health coaching that way. So let me know how to support you. I'm Roger Moore and this is Hypnosis Health Info.